Hey gang, I uh, just thought with IAE coming up pretty soon, um, we'd have a bunch of new players in on a free flight, and I thought it might be a good time to kind of go over the bare basics again. So this one's just going to be a real quick shallow dive into um, how to get an account, not necessarily with the free fly, but if you actually join in the free fly and want to buy an account, this is how you do that. And also I'm going to go through and show how to uh, how to get up, get out of bed, and uh, take off in the ship for the first time. Um, and just sort of give you the bare basics on that. So this one hopefully won't be too long. For the flying, I'll be using mouse and keyboard, which I don't use too often. Usually I fly with this, which is a verbal stick, and a HOTAS, which is a hand-on throttle and stick. So I fly with that thing and then a throttle in my left hand. Uh, but in this case, I'll be flying with a mouse and keyboard, like a newer player to the verse would that hasn't given into the craziness of buying all the controls yet. So let's go ahead and get into this. So we're going to start right here. Uh, this is obviously the first page. If you click on play now, it will take you here. You can start your adventure and play. For whatever reason, they start you out with an Aurora or an Avenger Titan. There's actually another package that's $45. $45 gets you this ship, the Aurora, and the game package um, and three months insurance and some money. It doesn't matter if you use the... Whoops, wrong way. If you use that code over there, you get some extra money and I get some credit for it too. So it's not completely altruistic on my part. But there are actually more ships than just these two that you can buy. You never, ever, ever, ever have to spend more than $45. So don't fall into the trap of saying, oh man, well, I want this bigger ship. So I've got to pay $100 or $150 or $500 or whatever. You can earn that in the game, and it doesn't take too long. It'll take like a week or two of playing to afford the bigger ships. And the ramp up, there's lots of people that do zero to hero, where they're basically playing from boxers and a t-shirt up to buying the biggest ship. Uh, so it's, it's not super difficult. But right here, starter pack, $45. Uh, during the free fly, you don't even need to do that. You can just jump in. Um, okay, so here we go. So you either have the Aurora starter or the Mustang Alpha starter. I tend to like the Aurora. Most people will, um, they'll suggest you take the Mustang and there's, there's pros and cons to both. I like the Aurora because it comes with the bed and you can log out. Um, and as a starter, that kind of matters. If you ever think you're going to want to play Squadron 42, uh, you can save a little bit of money and get this one because if you buy a starter pack and Squadron 42 separately, it's $90. If you buy them in this combo pack, it's 65 So you do save some money if you want to play that big game. But as far as getting into the verse and playing with all the people that are actually doing all the content creation, either of these packs will do it. Any of the packs on this page that have... Uh, it, it should actually be any of these ships. Yeah, any of these will do it. But I mean, you can see it goes up to $1,100. And there's actually some packages that are much more expensive than that, as I'm sure you've heard of if you've heard anything about this game. You don't need to spend all that. You can spend $45. You got a game package. You're good. You're in the verse. You can either tag along with other people. You can play on your own and just kind of take little missions and stuff like that. Either of these ships will do it. Either the Mustang Alpha or the Aurora. So once you have that, you're going to need to make an account. So you're going to come up here to account in the upper right, and then you're going to say enlist now. And then you're going to go ahead and click on this. You're going to make your call sign. A lot of them are taken now. Email, password, birth date, all that. You're going to click on that, and then you're going to click enlist. You're probably going to get an email on whatever email you have here. They'll just kind of confirm you are who you say you are then you'll be able to log in. You do need both the game package and this. So with those two pieces, this account here and the game package lets you actually log into the game. And then you're gonna download the game and that's gonna take a while because it's a big game. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get this. Let's go ahead and jump into the verse and see what it looks like. So catching a few.
All right, so once you have the game installed, you'll get this screen here and uh, you'll need to sign in with your RSI credentials. There's a bunch of little things here. If you click that button, it takes you to the site, uh, spectrum, board, back, help. Those aren't as useful. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in and show you what the screen looks like. Hang on just a second. So once you've signed in, you'll get this. You'll get your two-factor authentication, which uh, it'll usually send you an email. So I'm gonna go to my email, so avert your eyes. Okay, so uh, sometimes it can take a little while for that email, so you didn't have to sit through that, but I did. Uh, you'll get a code like the usual six uh, alphanumeric gibberish that you're seeing there. Go ahead and say authenticate. It'll let you in for however long you set, a day, of just one session, one day, I think a week, a month, or forever, uh, depending on how secure you want your account to be. I do a month, and that, that seems to be fine. So now you've got more things over here. You've obviously got launch game, which most people will do. And I'll show you, I'll almost certainly get a uh, issue here. Then I'll show you how to troubleshoot that. If you look over here, patch notes, this just, this typically shows you the most recent patch and it'll kind of give you an idea of known issues. So if something crashes on you or something isn't working, usually you'll see it here sometimes, but that's kind of information overload too, because you won't necessarily have the context if you're a new player. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, if you have some problems loading up and we'll go to this in a second, if you click on the settings and look at this verify, sometimes clicking verify, even though you just installed the thing can help. I don't know why it's just sometimes it does. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay. So we did have a bug on this. So, uh, you'll, for whatever reason, this happens to me a lot from what I understand. It doesn't happen to everyone, so maybe I'm lucky. Uh, you can try to relaunch and see if that works, and sometimes you click relaunch, it works again, so we're going to try that. Okay, here we go. So we're going on in. Um, I'll go ahead and take it from the main menu, so see me in a couple. That was actually pretty quick, so it came right back. Uh, so up here, you'll have a few things. You'll have your friends list is over here, notifications is over here. Then you've got these three options here. You've got options for the game here, which if you ever played a video game before, you probably know what these are. These are all the game settings. Uh, the one you'll probably want to look at is key bindings. And so this will tell you all the buttons you need to push as you're going through the game and what they all do. Um, this one is now set to flight, so you can sort of see that it's saying straight forward, straight backwards, straight right, all that. You come down here and switch this you can see what the controls are for foot and then or for being on foot and you can see that there's a lot fewer of them um this could be a little outdated so if you're hitting a button and it's not doing anything chances are they've actually changed it and they just haven't changed this map they try to be pretty good about that but sometimes it's not as great um your other options here are gamepad and uh, joystick. You can set up all the controls in the joystick here. Just make sure that you have this section down here set to joystick. Uh, but again, I'm going to be doing this one as keyboard and mouse. Um, so your three options here. What I recommend you do is go to Arena Commander because this is the one where you can learn how to fly. And... Um, you can select or rent a ship, so this way you can get the ship that you got, either the Mustang, the Aurora, or if you have deep pockets or you just know that you want that one ship and you've watched tons of videos and everybody says buy this ship, you can get that ship. Uh, what you probably want to do, you select that ship from here, um, and then you go to single player. I'll go ahead and show you that. So you're going to have these ships and you can rent them, but you probably won't have any rental money if you're new. Uh, go to single player. You have classic race and lap count, which probably isn't what you want to start with. Click on that. And now you've got a bunch of options here. What I recommend doing before anything else is free flight because that just lets you fly around on your own in open space. Uh, and then you've got two options here. You got dying star, which is a bright red one, which I think dying star has actually been updated. So there's a little bit more space. Broken moon is neat too but you can just fly around and kind of get your bearings and i'll go ahead and um i'll jump into the verse and show you the controls from there just because that is probably where you're going to want to go first but i would recommend 
before really trying to fly, try one of these. So let's go ahead and go back. Uh, Star Marine. Sadly, almost no one plays Star Marine. It's a first-person shooter, and you can get the same type of gameplay in the Persistent Universe, so most people just go to the Persistent Universe. So let's go ahead and go into the Persistent Universe. We're going to click here. You can, collect your, uh, you can click on your server here, obviously, uh, EU, USA, or just pick best. I usually go with best. Uh, sometimes I'll go with Australia because for whatever reason, Australia's servers seem to be a little bit better. I think it's probably because they just don't have as many people. Uh, character customization, right here. You click on this, and you can basically just go through and decide how you want your guy to look. Or girl. Select a woman, too. So, uh, we'll go back to this. Hopefully it didn't wipe all of my super cool settings. Looks like it did. That looks mostly like the default. Um, so you pick your first head. Then you pick a second head. Uh, hang on. We're going to switch this guy up so it looks a little bit more like me. And there we go. So, uh, close enough. I wish I had this guy's abs, but it is what it is. So, go ahead and click accept once you get something that you think looks okay or if you don't care just go ahead and jump in so uh let's go ahead and jump in um i'm gonna fly down to laurel because right now you can see that my location is everest harbor which uh no I'll, I'll show you from actually no let's let's just go from here so here we go let me jump on in this can take a little bit of time all right so i did go ahead and reset my starting location I'm, now i'm gonna be at laurel uh, I just felt like it would be better for you all to see what it's like to take off from an actual city and not a station. Stations are a little bit easier. You don't have to travel as far. It's easier to find where you're going. It's either easier to find the button. I tend to start at Lorville because it is um, it's one of the oldest locations on the planet, and it has one of the easiest traversals from your start point to where your ship will spawn. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you real quick, uh, this is just kind of a quality of life thing. Go to graphics, come down here. Um, and if you got a really high end machine, don't worry about this, uh, but go ahead and click uh, VSync will default to yes, turn that off and turn off motion blur. And if you've got an older computer, definitely turn volumetric clouds down. Okay, let's go ahead and hop in. Uh, so you can sort of see that we've got a few elements here that should be pretty familiar. Um, you've got your chat over here, which I'm on the Australia server now. I decided to drop into this one. There's tends to be fewer trolls in Oz, and the people tend to be a little bit nicer. And they tend to have a lot less racism in the chat. Uh, not that there's a lot of it in this game, but every once in a while, especially during free fly events, there'll be a couple people that come in and try to poison the well, just as a heads up, but that's not the typical community. But here, you'll start here, you're in bed, you can move your mouse around, you can look at your body and all that, and kind of go up. Um, there's a few options for getting out of bed. Now, if you hit a direction key, so WASD, just the usual mouse or usual email yeah. the usual keyboard movements you can get around uh, but there's a few other options um, did that wrong so let's go ahead and get back up and we'll lay back down again get up from a sit you can just do that uh, just push forward so we're going to lie down okay so the main control in this game for interacting with things like most uh, cry engine games is you hold down F and you can see this went blue, and that means that we can interact with it, but you're not really seeing what I can do to interact. But if you look down here, you can see that there is get up. So if I click that, surprise, surprise, I get up. There's one more way that we can do this. We can lie down. And um, you'll notice that once you're in your ship, uh, WASD isn't going to get you out of your seat. It's going to fly the ship. So you can use this method to reach around, look for your exit, and then um, click the button to get up. You can also hit Y, and you'll get up. 
So now you are up and moving. So you're in the verse and look around. Again, the way that you interact with things is you hold down F. And if there's something that you can interact with, like make coffee, if you click F and left mouse button, it'll do the thing. It's making coffee very loudly. Wait for it. There we go. And now you can pick up that cup if you get the angle right. Still needs work. We'll leave it. But how you interact with everything is F. And you might be surprised at some of the things that you can actually interact with. Um, but where you want to go is right here, which leads to outside. There's not a whole lot to do in your room, and chances are you will probably never come back here in a game session after you spawn. Um, I couldn't think of any reason why you would need to at the moment. Eventually you will, but that's not in the game yet. And so now you're here and most of the Habs will have some setup kind of like this where it's you'll have other doors where other players are spawning in. Um, but right now, one of the things I'm going to talk about is you'll notice that I'm running kind of fast. If you tap F4, that's third person, and then F4 again kind of puts you a little bit further out. You can sort of see that moving around at a jog. So if you want to move around at a jog, that's fine, but you're going to use more water that way. Um, and you have to drink water and eat food. It's not it's not real arduous to um, have to eat and drink, but the more you're running, the more you'll need water, obviously. So I'm gonna move this into F4. Now, as I move now, I'm going to move the mouse wheel forward. You can see that now I'm moving a little bit faster and you can sort of see where this is going. If I turn around and mouse wheel back, I'll start moving slower and slower and slower until this. Um, pretty much anyone that's new to the game is going to be moving around at about this pace. Uh, role players like myself will tend to move at about this pace. Uh, a lot of other people just sprint everywhere, which if you want to sprint, you hold down shift. And then you'll run at your maximum speed. Again, you can exhaust yourself and you'll burn through water a lot faster. So again, I hit F here. Clicking anywhere on this doesn't work. You have to actually click on the button. So we're gonna come in here. You can see there's a panel right here. Um, you can see that there are five floors showing. Um, and you can see I just revealed six. So as I'm holding down F, if I hit the scroll wheel, it will actually scroll through the number of floors. But thankfully, we don't want to go to another floor. We want to go to the ground floor, which is always showing. And again, you got to click the button. So we click ground floor. We're going to go to the ground floor. So here we are in the ground floor. Uh, some of these maps can be a little bit maze-like. Um, there is signposting, uh, and it's typically actually signposts that are in the game. So you look around here, you can't go that way. You can only go this way, so um let's go ahead and start walking so we'll go this way again kind of leads us on rails and we come into the big reveal here we're out in the open uh but you can see there are signs everywhere and so these signs will tell you where you are and where you can go from there as you get into the bigger ones or into the bigger areas uh on areas like this it doesn't matter as much Again, I'm going to start running here just so that we can get there. So come out here, kind of in this big area. But again, that says Metro Center, and that sort of has a series of symbols. So we've got a wrench, a bar of some kind, and a medical center that way. So you're not wrong. That's, that's what lies that way. This is the Metro Center. Metro Center is the one that you want and any of the landing zones you're going to generally look for anything that leads to the spaceport and there's almost always going to be a map nearby and i'll show you what that looks like so just up and to the left here you can see that there's a map and so 
we know that we started uh, right here. So we are right here. We started at the L19 residence. So we walked up this way, we came around. Now we're looking at this. And so we can see TESA spaceport is right here. But again, this is just an actual map sitting in here. We're here, we came from this direction, so we wanna to go to our right. So we're gonna come down here. And again, we have signposting. So this says the rapid transit line for the perimeter line and the spaceport line. Again, we want the spaceport. Okay, so here we are coming up on the um, spaceport itself. So you can sort of see it says, welcome to the spaceport. So you know you're in the right place. You'll come up here um, and it's not really totally obvious what you're supposed to do. You've got a desk over here. You've got places to sit over there. And then you've got these little kiosks and these little kiosks will be in all of the starting locations at their spaceports. Uh, there are a number of different kinds of kiosks, but the one that you're looking for is fleet manager. So once you find that, you're there. So F and left mouse button will bring you in and they'll call up your ships. You will not have as many ships as I have, uh, not to start with. Uh, so just in the interest of keeping things fair, uh, you will probably have whatever starter ship you picked. So either the RSI um, Aurora or the Consolidated Outlands Mustang Alpha. Uh, and since it's a free fly, they will usually have a couple ships. My, my Aurora was destroyed. So let's go ahead and get the Aurora up. Go ahead and call this one. Your insurance claim has go ahead been and sent. Expedite Your that. Vehicle has you been won't have to go through that. So what will happen is you will probably have a couple ships here, especially if you're dropping in a free flight. They usually have a ship or two that they'll kind of demo um, that you'll have access to. And then if you buy the game package and you jump in after the free flight, uh, then you'll you'll only have the one ship that you own there. They usually have like one or two. So we'll go ahead and get this Vehicle Aurora selected. Clipper ship, which Stand is the by. starter Aurora. Your vehicle has been delivered We're in to the hangar two. Location. So keep that in mind. So you can either click the Let's X in visit. the upper right hand corner, Bye. or you can just click uh, S, hold down S, and you'll back away until you disengage from the screen. Now, if you look over here, get that guy out of the way. If you look over there, it's saying RSI Aurora CL, hangar two, 871 meters. So that is telling me that my ship is at hangar two, it's 871 meters. So how do we get to it? So you're gonna to wanna to look around for elevators. That's a ship store, which is kind of nice. Once you played the game for a little bit, when I was saying you can get a ship in game, that's where you can get the ship in game. You can also rent ships if you wanna try something out and see if you actually like it. Costs a lot less, just rent it for a day and see if that ship's any good. It'll be stock and you won't be able to change it, but you can do it. So again, F, left mouse button, click on that. We're in hangar two. So again, you'll notice that there's a lot of things here. So if it puts you in hangar 10 or 11, you just hold down F, mouse wheel. Unfortunately, it also zooms the view in and out. And we're gonna come out here. So, it does this occasionally at Lorville where it'll put your tiny little ship in a great big hangar, but uh, just run in until your ship comes into view. These ships are actually bigger than they seem. Um, but pop in. Uh, so, you can sort of see I kept the contextual tips on for where the entrances are, and you can see when I hold down F, it kind of lights this up, but I'm not close enough to actually interact. So, we're going to get closer. And now we've got options. So we can enter ship, open door, or open ladder. So if you just open the ladder, it just does that. You can't really do anything with it. If you open the door, nothing's happening, but you can actually jump your way in there. It's kind of hard. So we're gonna go ahead and close both of those. So everything's closed up. If you just say enter ship, 
they'll just enter the ship, surprisingly enough. They'll just kind of go through a baked-in animation. Uh, so now you're inside your ship, your Aurora, or whatever you bought. Uh, the reason I like the Aurora is because right there you have a bed. Again, to climb into bed, hold down F and look at it. Click that lie down and you will lie down in that bed. Uh, but what we want to do is fly this thing. So we're going to come up here. And you can kind of see that you can't really get around the seat or anything. So you can't jump over it or anything like that. But if you hold down F right about here. Again, if you're too far away, actually they changed it. It used to be that if you were about this far away, it didn't work. And so you couldn't tell what you're supposed to do here. Click enter pilot seat. You'll squeeze around the side. Only ship that has this animation, by the way, so it's probably going away. So now you're in your ship. And so you're probably going to hold down WASD and all of this and, you know, move your mouse around and it's not going to do anything. So if you look at the center reticle there, you can sort of see how it's got the sort of little triangle shape that stretches out. Now, when I'm flying, the further away from that center reticle I get, the faster my ship is going to move in that direction. So if I push it this way, the ship's going to go up very quickly. If I just put it here, right about there, the ship's going to very slowly go up. And so when you're flying around, you may notice that you're drifting one way or the other, or you might try to look at your ship in third person and you'll try to look around and all of a sudden your ship will start flying haywire. It can, it can be a little distracting. So if you're in third person and you hold down Z, now you can spin around your ship and it's not impacting what direction your ship is flying. That's, that's a good trick to know. So F4 brings you back into your ship. So again, this is going to be how you control your direction. If you look to the left right here, this is your velocity limiter. And so you can see right now it's sort of a red square. Uh, but if I mouse wheel forward, actually, I think my ship has to be on. So now's a good time to show you how to turn your ship on. Um, let's actually get out of the ship. I want to show you one other thing. Okay, so we're outside the ship, and this is because I wanted to show you something kind of important. So if I hold down F and left mouse button, it pulls up this contextual, you've, you've probably seen this in other games. It's just kind of a wheel where you can kind of do quick actions. Um, this is especially good if you don't know all the shortcut keys. So if you're trying to do something in the game, almost all of them are gonna be here. So you can have item interactions, and one thing you can see, like flashlight enable, right down here that's barely visible, it has a T. So if I exit out and I hit T, that's my flashlight. So you can see my flashlight right there. So it's telling you what button you can click, but you can also do it from here. So you could go item actions, flashlight. Now my flashlight is on and I did it through this wheel. And same thing, I can go to actions, item actions, flashlight disable, now it's off. But you could do that with a lot of things. Don't unequip your helmet if you're going to be going out into space. You've got personal inventory here, and I'll show you that as well. Now, when you're first starting, uh, you're not going to have much in the way of inventory. So this is actually good it's on suspense because you won't have anything. Um, I don't even think you'll start with this. So multi-tool, you won't actually have it on you. I think you'll have an arc light pistol, uh, which is not really powerful. You won't have this outfit. Um, but inventory eventually where, will be where you go to do things. So you can get that by hitting F, right mouse button, and personal inventory. That takes you there. Your other option is if you hit I, that pulls you in there. So you hit I again, it takes you out. The other way you're going to interact with the world outside of F clicking on things is F1 calls up your Moby Glass. And this kind of gives you your critical stats here, how much oxygen you have remaining. We're on a planet with an ox or with an atmosphere, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, there's a bunch of options down here. 
This is chat. This is global chat, which is also showing up on the left hand side. But there are a few things you can do in here that relate to what you can do while you're flying. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, you can also get there by hitting F11, calls that window up uh, just directly. So you don't have to hit F1 and this, you can just hit F11. And it's funny, someone in chat is actually telling someone to hit F11. So that was good timing. Uh, but going back to the movie glass, so F1, you can look at your ships here. And this is, this is my home port, so I have all of my ships are here. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at, let's look at a uh, different Aurora, just because it's not going to let you call up the ship that you've actually got spawned. So this is your ship here. And you can kind of hold the mouse over it and look at it from different directions and change the systems, paint some weapons. Don't worry about that yet. That's sort of more advanced than you're going to need to worry about. The stock ship is fine for taking off for your first time. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at this again. So that's your ship. Knickknacks, don't worry about that. This is your star map for this initial flight. Don't worry about that. Mo Trader, that's for giving money to other players. Don't worry about that. Contract managers is a useful one. People will be telling you, uh, create a beacon or take a mission in the mission manager. This is what they're talking about. So this is where all your missions are. And you can click on mercenary and go do those things. I wouldn't suggest doing mercenary until you know what you're doing. Investigation missions tend to be pretty easy for starting out. Um, Search can be easy. Delivery is just box missions, and those can ramp up and give you more money. Personal missions can be unlawful, so be careful with that. You might end up doing bad guy missions and getting a crime stat without meaning to. So with all of that in mind, let's get back on our ship. All right, so we're back on our ship, so why aren't we moving? I can hit spacebar, I can hit WASD, you can see my stick is moving around. The problem is my ship is off. So there are a few ways that you can fire it up. Uh, one of the easiest ways, again, if you're ever in doubt, hold down F and look around your cockpit. And you can see things will start coming on. So we can power on or we can do flight ready. Flight ready is what you want. But if you look around your cabin, you can see that there's open exterior, there's unlock. The Aurora doesn't have as many buttons because it's a starter ship, so that's actually a good thing. We're going to go ahead and do flight ready in a second, but I want to show you other ways. So again, just like when I was outside the ship, if I hold down F and right mouse button, now we can do flight system ready. So I didn't actually do that, but so I could do that. And now my ship is on. And now I've got this HUD and everything else that I can work with. And my ship is fully powered on. Again, if I want to shut it off, sort of look around, I can do power off. Give it a second, come back, light ready, ship's on. The other option, if I hit U, as in underwear, shut the whole ship off, hit U again, whole ship comes on. And so a couple things to look at here. So now that the ship is on, if I move the mouse wheel up and down, if you look right over here at this little square, again, this is my velocity limiter and you can see it says velocity there. So when I move the mouse wheel up, you can see that moves all the way up. So now my ship can move at maximum speed. Now the catch on that is is there's a reason why there's a blue line down here and then it turns to red up here. And the reason is, is because once you start going into that red bar, the ship becomes more and more hard to control. So you'll start sliding a lot more when you're in space. So your ship doesn't have the thrusters to counter its forward momentum. When it's down here in the blue, it's a little bit easier to control. So. Unfortunately, this thing already opened up the uh, the overhead, which we can look. But typically what you do, again, there's several ways you can do this. You can bind a key. Somebody is locking me up. I don't know why. 
Um, and there's an armistice zone, and one reason that you generally want to see, one of the reasons I'm starting in a starting location is they actually can't shoot at you in here. So while I'm walking you through this demo, I'm not going to get ganked. Uh, so if you come in here, you hit F11, it calls up your communications. You click on Friends, Lorville Landing Services. That's what you want right there. So if you click this button right there, that will open up the hangar doors, which you will need to do first. So we're going to turn that off. Another option is, and this is a little bit more difficult, again, hold down F and mouse wheel forward, zooms in. You can see that this one right here has Lorville Landing Services. You can click that button there and it'll do the same thing. And you can also key bind a button that will open that. So you've got all three options. So our ship is completely powered on. Uh, we've got it as a reasonable speed. So make sure you got that mouse down so that square is showing blue. Uh, so right now it's showing red, but it's around the line. Now it's showing blue. We're going to hold down space bar. And we're lifting off. And we're flying. So we're going up, we're going up, we're going up. Now if you look at the ship in third person, you can see that we still have our landing gear down. Uh, at the moment, there's not a whole... That won't really hurt you. And you can sort of see that right now that as I'm looking, my ship is moving around, and that's because I am moving that little lever there. So we kind of want to point down so we're a little bit more on the horizon. I'm still going up, which the ship has a little bit stronger thrusters in the front for whatever reason. So when it raises, it'll tend to do this. Just a quirk. A lot of the ships kind of have that. Um, but now we're, we're probably high enough. So if I hit N... You can see my landing gear went in. So in is landing gear down. So let's go ahead and start flying. So uh, W is thrust forward. So now we're flying forward. Uh, we're not flying forward very fast, but we are moving. You can sort of see that the buildings are going by. If I crank this up, there's a limit at this altitude when you're down in atmosphere. Your ship just isn't powerful enough to push through at full speed. Um, and so that's the basics of flying. I move to the right, I move to the left, up, down, and then if you do uh, Q and E, you'll roll. And those are your basic controls. And what I recommend doing is keeping your speed down until you have this part down. And again, what I really recommend doing is going into arena commander and doing this until you're comfortable enough with the controls because if you die in arena commander it doesn't matter you can just hit left mouse button and you respawn here you're going to spawn in a hospital you're going to have to go remember to put on a helmet and an undersuit you're going to have to go reclaim your ship and it's a pain in the ass and you got a lot further to travel so learn how to do this in arena commander first there are slow down just a little bit here so you can see the ship becomes a lot more maneuverable at lower speeds if I crank this up you can see the ship is fighting me and that's because I'm moving at a speed that flying around in this brick doesn't help me yet. so we're going to go back we're going to land so landing is basically just like taking off you can see that there's a contextual warning right there um, and it's telling me that there is a, a no-fly zone over this. That's going away eventually, so depending on when you watch this video, that may or may not be still here. Uh, but if you get too close to the city, it'll automatically take control of your ship, turn you around and fly you away, and there's nothing you can do until you hit the altitude that it wants you to be at. So as you're flying in, keep that in mind. Your first time landing... I suggest coming in slow. So right now we're moving at top safe speed. What I'm gonna do is actually move the mouse wheel down to about half, so we're moving around 50. Okay, not that slow. Actually, this I can show you this too. So there's two things that can happen while you're flying. You'll either be moving so fast that your ship can't turn 
or blacking out and that's because you have this wheel all the way up and you're moving at your max speed and typically that is when you will just be coming in on a landing zone or a station will just slam into it and you're like i'm not even hitting the button anymore what's going on the problem is that you're moving at full velocity and your ship doesn't have enough power to slow you down fast enough this opposite can be true if you have it all the way down like right now i'm holding down w and i'm not moving at all and that's because my velocity limiter is at zero so uh again just the basic controls this is a lot like being in space so i've shown you yaw and pitch if you do uh a and d you'll strafe left and right uh, s you'll strafe backwards and control you will strafe down so those are the basic controls so we're going to go forward here again i'm going to move that little square to about half because you're going faster than you realize now i'm not now i'm going pretty slow um i'm going to pick up the speed a little bit because i am used to flying um but if you look right over there you can see that blue flashing beacon that's my landing site and you can sort of see they've got a square around it and everything so it's that's where i need to get but you need to get to a certain range over that before it'll let you land so we're going to start slowing down again your first time i recommend going as slow as possible just so you don't go slamming into the ground so you can see up top here we've got this thing right here that says warning restricted area of the head so that's still the same what we're looking for is a second notice Okay, I think it is actually glitching out now, um, which can happen at some of the landing zones. Uh, so just like taking off, you have to request a landing. You can't just land on the pads or you'll get a crime stat. So again, we hit F11. We come up here, go to friends, go to Lorville landing services, click that, it's hailing. If it doesn't say hailing, you need to get closer. And it says assign landing base, so we're going to shut that off. We're going to look down here. We've already got that little arrow. What we're looking for is that little circle with the down arrow. That's our landing pad. The other little things you're seeing there are other ships spawning in. So again, keep your speed in the blue. So you don't want to go fast. The most important thing at this point is to remember to put down your landing gear. So if we look, and you can sort of see how the ship coasts to a stop there. Now if I look over here, you can see there's a couple things here. VTOL, CPLD, ESPD, don't worry about those. The one that you want is gear. Now if I tap N, that starts flashing. Tells me the landing gear is deployed, and you can see my landing gear is deployed. Um, now, uh, with that deployed, we're going to go ahead and keep flying. Again, flying with mouse and keyboard is hard, so you want to go slower. You kind of want to line yourself up right over this. I don't want to go that slow. Just bring it in this way, in here, and right there is probably good so again just kind of make yourself as level as possible now when you're new to the verse probably the easiest way to do this is to hit f4 and then again if you're moving your mouse around it's going to move your ship so hold down um, gotta get this centered so hold down z and you can see what's underneath you you can see my ship isn't actually over that spot. So we're going to realign this. We're going to stay on just a hair. Move forward just a little bit. It's been a long time since I've flown Aurora. These little guys are smaller than the ships I typically fly. Okay. Check where you are. You can see that now I'm too far. Well, actually, no, that, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to hold down control and we'll start going down. So at this point, you're doing pretty good. Just kind of keep taking it slow. If you feel like you're going down too fast, again, mouse wheel back. 
don't mouse wheel up too much or you'll slam into the ground. Um, now, once you're in the actual hangar itself, if you hold down the end key, it'll auto land you. Um, your first time landing, you probably want to do that. But if you don't, if you're wanting the full experience, just kind of keep tapping down until your ship taps down. Now start closing. Landing complete. Have a pleasant stay. Once you hear that, you're good. Now, one of the little tricks I recommend doing is shutting down your ship, or at the very least, shutting off your engine. So if you hit U, it shuts your whole ship down. And that's because right now there's a bug in the game where if you don't shut down your ship and you log, when you log back in, your ship will be hovering off the ground. Alpha project. Uh, but there you go. So you've walked around, you've taken off, you've landed, you're flying in the verse. So welcome to the verse, y'all. Catch me next time. Mm -hmm.